Good people, good people. Time for a productive soul, long overdue productive soul conversation. You might have, might have noticed that over the past month, which is birthday month, I probably have done a couple of these instead of my normal weekly cadence of the program. So now that we've kind of, I've done some traveling and gotten situated and settled, ah, I got to pass the torch over to the cancers. All right. But I think we got a couple more uh, days of Gemini celebrating to do. So cancers just hold off a little bit while we finish, but uh, I've missed you guys and missed the opportunities to just have that conversation be happening every single week and moving, of course, into the rest of the year. I will continue to do that, right? Give you guys some productive soul conversations to forward your life and your productivity. So before I get too far ahead, this is kind of a, I want to do a reveal of a um, magazine that I recently purchased um, by Gear. Uh, he, well, he's online. Um, he's one of the, he's a, I want to describe him as sort of like an artist, photographer, now um, owner of this magazine called Let's see if you guys are ready. Um, and I really love the theme behind this uh, magazine because it's all about sort of unifying style and life and culture uh, in a way that I, that, you know, sort of inspires me and reminds me of some of the things that um, I like to do, right? And my conversations about style and styling legends it's all about sort of the unifying principles, the things that um, bring us all together in style. And he does the same thing with his work. So that being said, um, this is what his recent publication is here. I'll tag him below. If you don't have a copy of this, you can go to his link and his profile to grab it. It's called No Chaser. Can you guys see that? Yeah, it's called No Chaser. And this one's all about return to family values. Um, let me look here, a couple of things that are noteworthy that I'm just looking at. Letter to my children. Oh, here we go. Oh man, it's gonna have some people balling. But anyway, um, it's a beautiful, beautiful work here. Got articles, clothing, uh, promotions, right? Right up my alley here. And uh, so I can't wait to get into this. So gear, thank you for sending this. All right, glad I got my copy. Straight no chaser. All right, so if you if you are into style and fashion and you know articles that you know speak to how we're all connected through style and um, across boundaries across borders, this is the uh, publication to go with. Beautiful work, well done. So um, and of course, as I read through this, I will have some nuggets and things to share with you guys too. Speaking of no chaser. Um, one of the brands that I've worked with and actually, um, came on board and started working with early this year, you guys might've noticed is a brand called clear K L Y R. And it is an American rum Da da. you guys can see that. One of the things that's kind of hard to see in this light is that there's an American flag in the background. Right. And, um, so clear rum is an American, uh, rum. Zero car, zero grams of carbs, gluten free, uh, zero grams of sugar, and it is really a very, very smooth rum. It's been dis been distilled twelve times, which means you know that burn when you sometimes <laughs> sip on something that you're not supposed to, or you sip on a little bit too much of it, and you got to do <laughs> one of those. Um, it is a remarkably smooth rum, and um, with a reverse osmosis filtration process has been filtered 18 times. So if you're looking for a rum that's pal palatable, that's smooth, that you want to actually use to maybe make some summer cocktail beverages, um, help yourself. You can head over to them at uh, clearrum.com or head over to their, um, uh, their Instagram page, right? They also do a canned cocktail, which is a lot of fun. This is the uh, Berry Lemonade Blast. Um, I've got another one here, which is the Pineapple Smash. They've got one that's called the Orange Crush, which I really like, and also the Punch. I think the Punch has got to be my favorite, right? Very mild, um, mild beverages. They are non-carbonated, so if you're expecting a little bit of fizz, this is, you can always add, right? Um, 
fizz to it, but with uh, some club soda or anything like that. But these are non um, non carbonated and they're made with clear rum. Okay. So anyway, ah, those are some of the housekeeping uh, plugs that I wanted to share with you. Um, and like I mentioned, if you want to help yourself, whether it's to the No Chaser magazine, I'll leave in the description section um, gears information. And also for those of you who are interested in getting or sampling Clear Rum and or want to be notified when there are some events happening um, where Clear Rum will be poured and shared and um, people gathering, you can I, I'll include all that information too, all right, in the description section. So on with the show and the conversation for today. So the last Productive Soul conversation that I was having was about the midway pivot, right? The mid-year pivot point. And the mid-year pivot point, although that conversation, you know, looking back, I feel like it was brief and a little bit, you know, kind of like a part one. <clears throat> because the mid-year pivot is like uh, kind of like really short, right? You you wake up one day and it's new year and then you wake up another day and, and mid-year is here, right? June comes. I don't know about you, but June was very quick and very fast and very furious and I'm looking back going, wow, where did the month go? I mean, the month is over, right? And and to me, when we celebrate the solstice, even though people look at it and think of it as like sort of the beginning of summer, <laughs> for me, I feel like the summer is kind of, you know, ending, right? Part of it, part of it is because the sun starts to, you know, get darker and darker and darker and darker. And I can just immediately notice it, right? It's not as bright at about eight o'clock as it used to be. Um, and, and so there's a part of me that starts to plan and starts to think, all right, well, let's start getting ready for the last half of the year. So this year, you know, I kicked off the year with a campaign where I really started to talk about this idea of uh, how, you know, a very small few actually follow through on their goals. I, I think it was 8%. Yeah. 8% of people follow through on their goals. And there were some things that I mentioned that are the secrets to them being able to follow through on their goals and make them happen. Um, one of those key things was beginning with the end in mind, right? And I used the illustration last um, in the last video that I did on this subject, where I talked about how, you know, when you are traveling on your way somewhere, right? There's a point in time, if you said it was gonna take you eight hours or seven or six to get somewhere, there's a point in time if you're looking at you know, the, the mile markers that tell you, hey, you know, it's, you know, 240 miles to get to XYZ a place, <clears throat> you know, you can gauge based on how fast you're going and how much further you have to go about how long it's going to take. And so the same thing applies when it comes to, of course, following through and reaching the end result of the end game that you set out to accomplish this year, okay? Now, I know it sounds very elementary, but if if we all did that, we wouldn't maybe need to be having this conversation, right? But it's it just doesn't hurt to hear it again or have it be restated. So looking from now to the end of the year or and looking from now and looking over the year, you can tell how fast or how close you're getting to certain outcomes that you planned on reaching, right? You can tell, you can say, hey, if you planned on losing a certain amount, of, of pounds, or if you planned on, um, you know, purchasing a home, or if you planned on running uh, a marathon, right? Whatever the, the game is, or if you planned on, you know, expanding yourself even just spiritually, right? There's some activities that you feel like technically, whether it's the meditating, whether it's going on a retreat or registering for a retreat, there's all sorts of things that you just feel that you should have, that should be in place, right? And if they're not in place, instead of maybe running two marathons for the year, maybe you'll end up realizing that you only have really enough time to train for one. Or maybe if you plan on purchasing multiple properties, you realize like, okay, you know, it's only gonna be a two deal kind of a year, right? Based on how long it takes for deals to either come into the pipeline or the deals that are in the pipeline to be uh, closed. We all have some version of this, right? And so the mid-year pivot, I'm giving you permission to just really take, you know, some ownership and some responsibility for how you want the rest of the year to go, right? And how you want to grow for the rest of the year. So, you know, a few months before you know it, 
if you've heard me talk about it before, I'll talk about it again. I really don't think the year is as long as most people think, right? And you may not uh, realize that the year is a lot shorter than you think, right? And what I mean by that, I'll just give you a simple illustration. If you say, oh man, I can't wait for my day off. Let's just remember that your day off, you might sleep eight to 10 hours of it, right? Depending on what your rest need is, right? Which leaves you with 14 hours of awake time, okay? Now, I only talked about the eight to 10 hours that you might have rested, but let's remember that, you know, you get up and you start scrolling through your phone. Remember that part? And then you decide, hmm, do I want to make breakfast or do I want to go out and grab something? Remember that part? I said right there, that's another hour and 15 minutes, hour and a half. So you really, you know, don't have 14 hours to the day. It's more like 13 or 12 and a half. And then maybe you decide, all right, um, I'm going to work out today. Or maybe I'm going to do laundry today. Or maybe I'm going to fix the yard today. Right? Or whatever it is, right? The decision, the time that it takes for you to make up your mind about what you want to do, that's eating up the time. And so before you know it, if you're lucky, you have maybe four or five, six if we're really generous, uh, generous about uh, six, six hours of time, if we're generous, to do anything, right? But the productivity or the quality of those six hours is a function of how far ahead did you think about what you needed to get done or what you've kind of locked your mind into getting done in those six hours, right? And again, that's really being generous. And before you know it, it's time to go to bed. It's time to get ready for the next day. And you're looking back and you're saying to yourself, man, where did the time go? Man, I just, oh, now you're back, right? Into the grind again, right? So to avoid that and to do yourself uh, a favor, I'm going to share with you again, if you don't have some sort of a planner or a system in place to support you, get one, right? Just do yourself that favor of getting a playbook, or a planner, right, to support you in your goals. Um, I was thinking before starting uh, this conversation today about how we have, you know, actually in the planner, there is, there's a section in here where I talk about, oh, moon phases, right? So I think on the 18th, somewhere around there, there was like a moon phase, well, if you, you know, practice and, and focusing on these things. Um, there's a moon phase calendar in here, right? And so certain certain phases, right? We kind of embrace the possibility that we might be, you know, cosmically connected um, to the universe and to the stars and all that good stuff. Um, there are certain times that, you know, make new determinations, right? To leverage the energy of the, of the planets and their alignment and our own, you know, zodiac signs. To make things happen. If that's kind of a thing that matters to you, leverage and take advantage of it, right? But in addition to that, look over the next, you know, few months, right? As far as when you're going to sort of like check in with yourself to make sure you're moving in the right direction. This is, this is so, this is just like one lens to look at planning, you know, to, uh, for the future, right? As far as your own actions and productivity with. Um, you can just go the other route of just kind of being, you know, mechanical about it and being a nerd and just sticking with just the time timetables and and uh, planning pages to coordinate yourself. But all 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 roads lead to having a place and a system and a method and a way for you to correct course when you're off course, right? Um, and so it, it really, really matters that you do yourself a favor and have your midway pivot. Take that initiative to do that. <clears throat> if you feel sort of lost about this whole thing, here's what I wanna, want you to consider, think about, ask yourself, right? Am I doing as well as I thought I'd be doing spiritually this year? Am I doing as well as I thought I'd be doing physically, you know, fitness-wise this year? Um, whether it's in your body, whether it's in your physical environment, as far as where you thought you would be living or where you wanted to move um, or things that you actually wanted to acquire or get, right? Whether it's a new car or a new home or um, 
new clothes, right? I mean, we can look in the physical category of, of what I call the five kingdoms and look and evaluate. Am I as emotionally sound and grounded and rooted as I wanted to be by this time of the year, right? Um, am I building the relationships? Am I making uh, the networking connections that I thought I'd be making by now? What do I need to shift? What do I need to change? Um, you know, and am I on a path, right? If you have some career goals or some monetary intentions, um, you know, the key thing is for you to assess where you are in a way that allows you to know what changes you need to make in order for you to get to where you need to be, right? So there's a quiz. Um, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the whole process, there's a whole quiz set out to this, right? Based based on this, so that you don't have to sort of get be lost when you're looking at this uh, playbook or looking at the planner. That quiz you you can also grab right from the uh, description section or in my bio, depending on where you're hearing or seeing this, um, so that it's easier on you for you to just really have a way of evaluating how you're doing so that you can make those changes really, really smoothly, okay? Um, so that covers it. That's it for this conversation, right? Make the midway pivot, make the mid-year pivot powerfully. Make it with some intentions, make it with some passion, make it with some focus. But I think one of the other X factors in this whole thing is make it sometimes with a community, right? So. There is also, if you go again to the bio section of my profile, there's a Facebook community that you can plug into so that you can begin to have conversations with other people who are either growing and or you know working through similar things that you're working through and you can support one another, right? And I can be involved also with posting and sharing links and resources that can help you uh, make some of these changes or pivots a lot more um, smoothly, right? And a lot more efficiently, okay? So community really matters because in the environment of others who are moving in a particular direction can really support you and inspire you with getting to where you want to go a lot faster, okay? So that's my uh, plug for the community. All right, so if you have any questions, feel free to leave some in the comments and or you can send me a direct message. Um, and that's it for now. So thanks again to um, Gear for the No Chaser magazine. Thanks to the good people at Clear. Thank you guys. Appreciate you all. And let's continue to have an amazing year. Let's make the pivots that we need to make and have a great rest of the year. All right. I'll see you guys next week on the Productive Soul Conversation.